It's the country's number one RVing radio show, sponsored by RVTravel.com, with your host, Alan Warren, the RV wingman. I want to visit with you for a few minutes about the year ahead and about listening and our ability and willingness to listen. When I was a boy growing up, I often heard my dad talk about something he called the big eye. Yep, the, uh, the big eye is an eyeball. And being able to see, he'd always say that having the big eye was a gift and everybody had it. They just needed to learn how to use it. Basically, the big eye is the ability to see things that are likely going to happen way, way before they do happen. Kind of like predicting the future. We all have the big eye, if we think about it. How often have you been driving down the road, doing everything right, somebody zoom, blows past you a million miles an hour, and uh, after the initial shock, what do you say to yourself? Probably, uh, man, that guy's going to get in a wreck. He going to get a ticket, right? Don't you do that? So the big eye is the ability to see and predict things in the future. Insurance companies have the big eye. They know that young males are more likely to get into accidents than young females. Parents of teenagers are able to see their kids and predict with a pretty high degree of certainty some of their future decisions. The funny thing about the big eye is that it's relatively easy to have when you're looking at others. Much more difficult to see yourself and to honestly predict future events in our own lives. The reason for that is that we are all blinded by our minds being stuck on emotions rather than being objective. So what in the world am I talking about? How does the big eye affect our viewers? How does the big eye affect you and me? Well, I believe that if we're honest with ourselves and we try and have the big eye, we'll see that our lives are constantly changing. We are on this incredibly slow-moving journey, one that we are so caught up in that we can't even see how we're changing. The you that you are today is not the you that you were yesterday, not the you that you're going to be tomorrow or next week or next year. I think almost anybody who's 40 or 50 or older has got to be able to look back at some of the things they did, some of the decisions that they made, and say, what in the hell was I thinking when I did whatever? What a horribly stupid decision I made. Why did I do that? Well, the reason you made those decisions, I made my decisions, was that we literally couldn't see the future. And most importantly, we didn't want to see the future. We refuse to listen to other people. How could our parents, how could our family, how could they see the future? But we couldn't. We didn't want to. We convinced ourselves that our decisions are not emotional. We convinced ourselves that they are absolutely rational, logical, that our parents or family were just trying to keep us from having fun. You can live in denial, and some folks do this their entire lives. But time and experience has a way of changing us, all of us, from being the old me to the present me, the old you into the present you. You ever wish that you would have taken somebody else's advice? Do you ever wish that you would have listened to others instead of being so headstrong and hell-bent on whatever you decided to do? I bet you do. I know I do. So why is this so important? What am I trying to communicate We've all heard the saying that live and learn, but do we really live and learn from our mistakes or do we just live and continue making mistakes as we move through life? My hope for those who listen to this show is that, and those who (laughs) catch our live streams, is that you realize that you, just like me, are pretty much on autopilot. And um, in your decision-making, you're on autopilot. Those decisions are all too often based upon emotion, based upon what we want at the time. We convince ourselves that whatever we decide upon is the absolute right decision, and we tend to resent other people who don't support us, and we block out what they're saying. It's okay to admit it. We all do it. You can hate me for saying this. You can deny that you are a work in progress, but it ain't going to change the outcome if you make a bad decision decision. When you were a kid and your parents told you, hey, don't do this, or I wouldn't do that, most likely it wasn't to hurt you. It wasn't to keep you from having fun. It was because they had the big eye. At one time, they knew everything just like you. 
But life and experience and failures and disappointments helped change them into, from who they were into who they are. I believe that we really don't learn as much from our successes as we do from our mistakes and our failures. So what does this have to do with the price of tea in China? Anyway, wingman, well, plenty. Look at anything you bought, anything you've accomplished. Compare the reality of it to what you thought it was going to be like, from getting a college degree to running your own business to how much money you thought it was going to take to live to pretty much anything. For me, it was always more difficult, always more time-consuming, always less profitable, always more work than I ever imagined it, it would be in the beginning. You know, you don't know what you don't know, but you do know that things are almost guaranteed to not be exactly the way you planned. The wingman's advice for you who will be buying a new RV is to be honest with yourself before you buy. It's okay to be excited. It is. If you're not excited, hell, it's probably, probably not a good idea to buy it. But don't go into the deal being willfully blind. Look ahead a year or two or five. Look into the future and be honest with yourself. Try and balance the excitement with the reality that you know is heading your way. Because whatever RV you buy, you will change the way that you see it after you've owned it for a while. You'll realize that maybe, maybe you didn't really need those bunk beds after all. They're actually more storage shelves than anything else. So you'll realize that you should have shopped around more, found a dealer who's known more for their after the sale service, excellent service, instead of a RV dealer that just sells for the cheapest price possible. So balance your excitement. Listen to others around you, especially those who see something different than you do, and don't, don't ignore them. Listen to what they have to say. They could be dream killers. They could be, or they could have the big eye. And listening to them or thinking about something you may not have thought about could be a good idea and could prevent you from making a very costly mistake. Yep, you're an individual, and there's nobody else exactly like you. But the truth is, your behavior, my behavior, is pretty predictable. But if you have the big eye, you just might be able to avoid making some really bad decisions when you decide on the RV that you should buy. Another way to avoid making bad RV purchase decisions is to attend an RV class on what to look for when buying a new RV. The classes are free, and they are fantastic. They are held at some of the best RV dealers that I know of, people that you can trust. Now, in these classes, in less than two hours, you're going to learn so many things, things that you need to look for, so many things you need to think about, so many things you need to ask that you likely have no idea about right now. We have made tremendous strides with the RV Show USA, and we're doing, I think, a, a pretty good job of providing good, honest reliable information so that you'll be able to make the best decisions possible and get the most out of your RV ownership experience. In 2020, we're going to work even harder to get these classes into more states than just Texas. These classes are open to anybody, no matter if you own an RV or not. It doesn't matter where you bought your RV. They're always held on the second Wednesday of the month at our preferred dealers starting at 6 p.m. There's no selling going on. They are purely about education and making you a smarter, more confident RVer and a more confident RV owner. They're held, as I said, by some of the finest RV dealers in the nation. There's no YouTube video out there that will substitute for attending these classes. They are fantastic to learn more about them and how to attend or if a, you're a dealer and you'd like to learn how you can get involved to help people have the big eye, I guess, when buying an RV. Contact us. Just go to our website, thervshowusa.com, and click on RV classes. If you're in the market for a new RV, or if you know somebody who's looking at buying a new RV, these monthly classes can save you thousands of dollars. They really can, and countless headaches. All right, let's see. Uh, Jumping John, what you got going on over there? Here's uh, here's what I want to do. I want to hear what our listeners think about your monologue, about having the big eye, you know. Uh, you bring up things that, that make me take a minute and think. Um, I know that I look back at some of my decisions and wish I would have had the big eye back then. Or <laughs> even now in, in, in present time, sometimes I just wish I would have had my wife's big eye because she kind of sees the future better than I do. Yep. Uh, but I, I think we all do. So um, 
leave us a voicemail uh, at our 24-7-1330-946-4626. That's 1330-WINGMAN. Uh, let us know what you think. We want to hear from you uh, on, on this monologue. That's right. Again, the telephone number 24-7 is 1330-WINGMAN. All right, coming up in our After the Show show, we're going to make another big announcement about a new show sponsor for 2020. Uh, and for that will be in our live stream and on our podcast. You all be able to catch that. For now, thanks to John Hebert and the great service he's doing for military veteran-owned businesses, to RV Nana at PPL Motorhomes, and to you for helping make the RV Show USA the most listened to and talked about show on radio and social media about the RV lifestyle. Until next time, I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman, reminding you, be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home. So long, everybody.